trapping you in a vast field of space wreckage with nothing more than an immortal chicken for company, Breath Edge is a survival adventure game with an undeniably novel setup. Instead of punching trees, you'll navigate a zero-gravity environment in order to snag supplies, craft tools, and avoid suffocation. All while trying to uncover the twisting plot behind the crash of the largest space liner in history. Despite the fresh setting, you'll only get a taste of some rudimentary survival gameplay before a scripted story takes over and pulls you out of the survival mechanics entirely. The sense that another wondrous discovery is just around the corner is what drives games like this, and Breath Edge just doesn't have it. Breath Edge is desperate to please with its jokes, slapstick humor, and goofy concepts like corpse-powered coffin robots. It's self-aware that it's a single-player, story-driven survival game, and makes references to tropes of the genre, including gags about shoehorn plot contrivances, artificially extended wait times, stale gameplay, and fetch quests. Unfortunately, Breath Edge is guilty of the things it makes jokes about. It's full of the most tedious, repetitive kinds of survival game cliches. Even when I was laughing, its awareness of these issues doesn't make them any less of a problem. And humor isn't a substitute for innovative gameplay. It was fun to putter around in microgravity at first, bouncing off things and peeking behind asteroids. Many of the ruined spaceships that make up its world and the environments within it are designed quite well, with new things to find often hidden nearby or enticingly placed in plain view across a distance you're not sure how to cross yet. The layout of the early survival areas is one of Breath Edge's greatest strengths, feeling both very deliberately designed and like they could be real places. The problem is that everything you do is limited by your air supply, which is annoyingly short even when upgraded. Generally, I had frustratingly little time to explore and gather before I needed to retreat to an air supply, then tediously wait for my air to refill. And because you can't just go straight up to breathe like in Subnautica, this means you're constantly backtracking. You have to wait for crafting and research too. There's just so much killing time in this for a single player game. That and the all too short survival segments just aren't very deep. There's no meaningful base building, no automation to cut down on busy work, no upgraded gathering or rare resources. It's just a lot of clicking and hand crafting, offering what's essentially the most basic early gameplay of games like Subnautica, Empyrean, or Ark without any of the fun that comes later. It even leans heavily on tropes like tool breakage, which is the worst kind of survival gameplay for my money. Breath Edge seems to repeat all the simplest mistakes from games that came before it. After about 15 hours of that barebones survival gameplay, Breath Edge abruptly switches genres to become a linear adventure game. Or, perhaps more accurately, since there are no real puzzles, a straight line walking simulator. Except, sometimes you have to backtrack to a crafting station because your tool broke. That's right, the last 10 hours of a survival game that took me 25 hours to complete aren't a survival game at all. Arguably, that's a good thing, because Breath Edge's survival elements never evolve beyond the basics, but what comes after is worse. Instead of discovery, the second half relies entirely on a story to drive you forward. You move through a space station, craft one or two things from parts lying directly around you, and install them. Then you fly to the next bit and do it again, all while being barraged by jokes. It's little more than a long, interactive cutscene. It's a shame, because I wanted to like things about Breath Edge. A lot of love went into the whimsical yet grim Soviet retrofuturism of its visual design, and enjoying its spooky stations, propaganda murals, or fictional pop culture is one of the best parts. Sometimes the jokes do land, like the many slapstick death poses you find other passengers in, the sci-fi parodies, or the silly tool designs. Riding a vacuum cleaner like a rocket motorcycle? That's funny! But for every joke that hits, more land flat. Seems it will be a long day. Your spacesuit's AI directs you around while constantly quipping, but the high-speed delivery gets obnoxious fast, and the suit's jokes are mostly terrible. Adding insult to injury? If you die, you get to hear all those same lines again the next time through. When that joke is a fourth wall breaking meta commentary about game developers making things hard or tedious to pad out the total gameplay time, it starts to feel less like a referential goof 
and more like an annoying lack of self-awareness. A detailed plan of the service module. If you find the missing information, you can create such a module yourself. Who knows for what purpose? Breath Edge may launch survival games into the final frontier, but it brings some of the worst tropes of the genre along with it, before abandoning the genre entirely in favor of a linear story propelled by hit and miss humor. It's all style over substance, looking great on the surface without much of interest or sense of progression underneath that polish. With the active exploration hampered by an obnoxious oxygen system and crafting that never advances beyond the most basic mechanics, it relies too heavily on the initial novelty of floating around and the occasional decent joke. Breath Edge just isn't much fun to play. For more survival, check out our early access review of Valheim, and for some serious pro-level crafting, watch our Factorio review. And for everything else, stick with IGN.